Welcome back, everybody. I hope you're having a good start of your week. I've seen several comments here, TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, for several years from both sides of the political aisle asking if the Hunger Games is about to become a real thing. And quite honestly, I can't say a firm no questions asked no to it. Especially in the last couple of years. January 6th, no matter how misguided, no matter how stupid the decision to go to the Capitol, when it was after hours, not on an organized tour, when you were not there on official government business, no matter how ill-advised that decision was, none of the people who did were armed. None of them were violent. All Congress had been evacuated quite a bit before because of a bomb scare. The only death was actually Babbitt, who was shot by police. Sicknick died the next day of natural causes. He did not die there that night as a result of actions of anyone there. We've now seen video of police firing flashbangs behind the crowd to make them run toward the Capitol. I've personally seen video of police opening doors, moving barricades, and openly ordering people to go in. Yet we're still supposed to believe this was an insurrection to make 1776 look completely tame. We're supposed to believe that there were gallows on every side and there were people with rifles just openly firing through windows. We're supposed to believe AOCs claimed that she was nearly raped. To hear her tell it, someone was within four centimeters of grabbing her before some brave member of security got them, even though AOC was over a mile away, behind a locked door in a building they couldn't get into. These are people who want to rile up a situation to make themselves look good. The media has done it for years. After that date, after that incident, there were a lot of people who were treated horribly. I've seen many reports of a man who was denied cancer treatment until it was too late. Then he was sent home because they couldn't provide the need medical care that they had denied him. Another one committed suicide. Yet we've never gotten an autopsy. We've never gotten any information other than he killed himself in the cell. Only now, more than a year later, are we starting to see judges say, you've never issued any charges, you've never called witnesses, you've never done anything. You have violated the Constitution in every way because they are clearly given the right by God protected by the Constitution to a speedy public trial with a jury of their peers. I am honestly waiting on some Democrat to say, well, no, this was an insurrection. The Constitution doesn't apply to them. Because they honestly believe that they can do whatever they want, whenever they want, to whoever they want, and no one may say boo. Unfortunately, they have a lot of people on the bench who agree with them. They now have a Supreme Court Justice who openly said that she was very light on child sex offenders, pedophiles, because one incident does not indicate a trend. She doesn't want to, to over-punish them. In my mind, you aren't a child. You should be thrown into a locked arena with the biggest, meanest, most violent people in the world. And if you survive 20 minutes, you get to live the rest of your life in jail. But I'm not in charge. But back to the original point, the Hunger Games. Remember that in the first book, we hear about the uprising 74 years before the events of that book, where the 13 districts of Pan Am rose up, and to hear it told by the Capitol in President Snow's video, they turned against the nation that fed them, that protected them, that loved them. And that is exactly what Joe Biden or Jill or Kamala or Nancy or any of the other Democrats will say. 
You're turning against a nation that loves you. Even though the current administration canceled the Keystone XL pipeline project, meaning that 800,000 barrels a day would not be transported into this country from Canada far more safely, far more reliably, and far more cheaply than any other method of shipping oil. We would not be refining it, we would not be selling it, therefore the price of gas went up. They first screamed and yelled, Joe Biden has no control over gas. Nothing he does will affect it. Even though those of us who understand supply and demand know that the, that's a lie. Next, they tried to blame Putin. Of our total imports, Russia only made up 2%. I'm going to make just an analogy. If I import koozies, I import these from Canada. And I import one million a day. Okay? Two percent. Ten percent would be a hundred thousand. Two one one percent would be ten thousand. So I take an importer, a company I don't like in Canada, that made twenty thousand of my one million a day. And I tell them I don't want your cruises anymore. I'm now down to 9.98 million a day. I can tell you that's not going to make me raise my price. That should not affect the price of anything. A 2% change in supply. Yet, we're told it's Putin's fault. They're now telling us that food shortages are coming. No one can predict as accurately as they say they have anything on the planet. But we know that for years, Democrats have, through farm subsidies, paid farmers to leave their fields fallow, unplanted, or paid them not to raise as many cattle or chickens or pigs or whatever. And they've only gotten more and more verbose with it over time. Now they're openly saying, yes, we're paying them not to produce, but a food shortage is coming, and it's not our fault. I can remember a story that I read around 2013 or 14. This was a farm-to-table venue in the Northwest. And I'm quite literally saying farm-to-table for a reason. They ran the farm. They grew the vegetables, they grew the fruits, they raised the livestock, they butchered the livestock, they cooked it all. They did not ship a single thing off of their land to be processed. They ran it all. And they were running it all to FDA standards. Yet the government showed up and forced them to take everything they had already prepared for a party that was already seated at the tables, put it in 55 gallon drums, and pour bleach on it so it could not even be used as pig slop because it was not government approved. Somehow, the government had decreed that farm could not, on private land, grow crops, raise livestock, safely and very humanely butcher said livestock, prepare food and serve it. I'm honestly not going to be surprised if and when the food shortage hits, Anyone like my family, who could easily grow a garden to feed us, we're told, uh, no, gardening is not allowed. That's not safe food. That's not healthy food. We're going to just have to make you stand back while we destroy it. These will be the people saying, we can't, we can't help you. There's no food. But we're going to destroy the food you just grew. I know for a fact that anyone who has freeze-dried and hydrated food and has talked about it, they're going to see people banging on their door. People they don't know. People who have just found a way to find them, screaming, you're going to give me your food. And it's going to make the Watts riots of the, uh, of the Civil Rights Movement. It's going to make the need for a rooftop Korean, as they saw during Watts riots, pale in comparison. You'll see people killed over a slice of bread. And all that will lead to the government declaring 
that as the country is in a state of insurrection and rebellion, we are sadly required to enact martial law. Anyone not in their homes in the next hour will be shot on sight. God bless our new founding fathers, and may the odds be ever in your favor. I've said for some time that the very people screaming how evil Donald Trump was for working for the American people first are going to be the people who openly tell us, I'm sorry you're, you're, you're starving, but you're not allowed to grow food. I'm sorry you lost your job, but you're not allowed to buy gas. I'm sorry you lost your home, but you're not allowed to go make money to pay for the rent. It's all Donald Trump's fault. We passed all the laws. We set the thugs out to keep you from doing anything. We shot at you for trying to do your jobs and earn money for food, but it's all Donald Trump's fault. These are going to be the people who one day, as they pull the trigger, they will scream, Donald Trump is controlling my body, making me shoot you! And they expect the world to believe them. There is only one bit of solace I have. I know that when that day comes, I will not go gently. Dylan Thomas was very right. I will not go gently in the midnight. I'll be stacking government thugs and international thugs like cordwood until they manage to put me down. When that happens, I will drag those I've stacked like cordwood with me to the throne of God. And while I kneel and say, Father, I've returned home, they will be left there trying to figure out a way to, to justify their life of subjugating people. And ultimately, they're more likely to end up going straight to hell. I know God wins in the end, but I also know that the world's going to get extremely dark before that happens. And yes, I know that I get a bit passionate in how I talk about Democrats or liberals in general or the socialist globalist tyrant cabal. But in the end, yes, it is as simple as God wins. And our job is very simple, to spread his word, to try to awaken the masses, to be the voice crying in the wilderness. As a historian, as a history teacher by certification, I go a step farther, and I try to wake people up to not only the truth of the Bible, but the truth of what's happening in front of their eyes. Because in many cases, if you can just show someone and they can't deny it that Pelosi and Waters and Schumer and Biden and Harris and the rest are tyrants bent on subjugation of this country, once you prove that to them, their eyes are open to a lot more. So I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. Thank you guys for sticking it out. It's been as long as some of mine, but it's longer than most. Alright, now, I realized in my last video I really didn't go into The Hunger Games because it is fiction but the question remains how many of you can honestly say you can't see the current government doing something along those lines? I doubt they would go so far as to say you will surrender one boy, one girl, ages 12 to 18, to fight to the death in an arena so you can all watch them this happen. But, I've said for a while that we're headed for a bastardized conglomeration of Brave New World, Fahrenheit 451, 1984, and Animal Farm, where they will openly say we're more equal than you as opposed to just continuing it. In that conglomeration, they will one day just rule that no one is capable of raising children except the government. They will seize children at birth, they will hypersexualize them, they will indoctrinate them as soon as the child is just to understand English, they will keep them drugged on happy pills like Soma in Brave New World. And within two generations, they have a pliant workforce. The one difference between all of those books and Day, at least here in the States, is liberal or conservative, 
right or left, Republican or Democrat, does not matter when it comes to the safety of our children. I will be the first to tell you I do not have kids. I have nephews and a niece. But if the government came to us, my family as a whole, 10 years ago and said, you will surrender your children, we will raise them. My parents, my sister, my brother, and I would all be lying, cooling on the floor before we gave those children up. And yes, I realized that men's, the children would still have gone, but they would have witnessed the ferocity with which we would defend them. And the government does not care that that truly would be the case. Ultimately, it would be a declaration that you will thank us for the pittance of food we give you. You will thank us for the two hours of electricity we give you every day. You will thank us for the one eight-ounce bottle of water you are allowed to share between your family every day. You will work until you bleed and die, and you will thank us for the opportunity. They're very close to declaring that now. They have their great reset where they will declare, you will own nothing and you will be happy. They tried to invite Trump to the table and he spat in their eye and he exposed them. That's why they hate him. That's why Soros and every other extremely rich socialist on the planet did everything they could to ensure Biden was installed like a toilet in 2021. They had eight years under Obama and they thought they would just sail through to a Hillary victory for eight more and get their way and the American people turned and said no. What they don't realize, at least not all of them, is that this year, 2022, the American people have now had almost, will have had almost two years of Biden destroying everything he can. Kamala cackling at his side, Pelosi and Schumer cheering him on. That's why they're working so hard right now to pass all of their dream bills, digital currency controlled by them, outlaw all medications that they do not personally approve of, and none of them are doctors, outlaw all lessons being taught that are not government propaganda, force their propaganda. They're afraid they're going to lose their power in November, so they're working very hard right now to basically pass a law saying you will not vote for anyone but us. And if they get their way, this country is going to crumble and burn. And a short time after that, you will hear the people who were cheering them on wailing and crying. Why did none of the people who, who, who were all these Trump bigots, why didn't they just hide and Wait so they can save us now. The end is very near, folks. I know that certain of the signs of Revelation, wars and rumors of wars, plague and famine, have been commonplace for years. But we are very, very close, and we are starting to see all but the most overt of signs. Solar and lunar eclipse on the same day, the sun will be as sackcloth, the moon will be as blood. John on Patmos did not have the scientific knowledge that pretty much every one of us has today to know that that is a solar eclipse and a lunar eclipse. So he wrote it as he saw it happen. And the sun was blackened and the moon was reddened. When we see that seven-year treaty between a one-world government and Israel, we will know that in a mere seven years, this chapter of humanity will be over and we will be moving into the thousand year reign of Christ. At the end of that, we move into eternity. The only real question I have left is not how would you survive a hunger against America? It's not how do we stop it from happening? It's are you ready for what comes at the end of that seven years? Are you ready to meet Christ, to meet the Creator God. If you can't say for sure that you are, I'm here. Millions of others are available to talk to your pastor, your Christian friends. People on the internet that you know are Christians, ask questions, talk to us. That's why we're here. Have a wonderful day. God bless. Make sure you subscribe, turn on notifications so you know every time I post. I am still trying to figure out what's going on with Apple that will not let me post 
podcasts. Once I have that figured out, I will be active there. Until then, I want to have a wonderful day. God bless.